$175,000? As a matter of fact, I think he might be able to help. Just don't know if I have the strength to do it, Lord. And I think you'll make a great head deacon, too. Maybe in a year or two, maybe assistant pastor. It's just another confirmation that it's time for me to go. I've come up with some very, very creative ways of dodging that old gal. She'll be here in about 30 minutes. I'm wondering, can you help me find Pastor Jenkins? Mabel Wright, you sneaky pastor. I've known him for a long time, and I know he'll do right by me. And he'll do right by us too, Mary, if you come with me. But I'm fairly certain that once you come on board, most of your congregation will come over with you. You know, especially the givers, man. Now, I know Timonson promised me the head deacon job, but I don't know if the job is mine yet. And how is that any different than what you've been trying to do? What about talking to Pastor McKnight? I don't know, Mary. I don't know. Well, you know, if you go over into the book of 2 Corinthians, it's over there, too. Ooh, you're right. Mm -hmm. And it's a goodie, too. Good stuff. Yep. Got a buzz. Got a phone call coming in. Excuse me a second. Gina. Uh, hello. Mm-hmm. Well, you know that's going to end the peace and quietness of this day. Mm-hmm. And may I ask why you didn't want to be the one to tell her? Right. Okay. Well, you know I'm going to get you back for this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, let's have it. Which one of my tormentors is on the way in? <laughs> Carmelita Pavarelli Schwartz. Bert. <laughs> yeah, let's solve this now, problem. Uh, 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 put that thing back on. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. I've been thinking about this very moment for a while now, and it dawned on me, in a moment of sheer genius, I might add, mm. that you could assist my escaping, so. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. You're not putting me in the middle of this one. No, ma'am. Put, mm -mm. put you in the, me? Put you in the middle, moi? Moi. Well, now, having said that, it does dawn on me. It does occur to me. I just thought of the fact that you were the one that asked to be my assistant. So right now, I need assistant, so. Let's go into my office for a little moment. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. 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 No, ma'am. No. 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 Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. 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 Mm. 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 Mm -mm. Oh, a rat. <gasps> now, 
What I want you oh, to do absolutely is you are, oh, not. Oh, it's not going to take but a second. No. Or two. We're just going to get you right in. No. Here. Oh, yeah. Oh, right in there. I'm the, the, See, no. we just put this right here. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No. Excuse me, have you seen Pastor Lynn? I checked in the office, but she wasn't there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you kidding me? I knew I made a mistake, a big mistake. And you knew right. You have no idea who's about to walk through these doors. No, but I know who's about to walk out of them. Well, you better make it quick before Lynn gets you in one of these get-ups, too. That's not going to happen. Man, there's no end to how big of a nut house this place has become. Hold on, what's going on, Lamar? Now she's got the assistant pastor dressed as a scullery maid. Oh, in, my Lord! In the sanctuary. You laughing? Yeah, I'm done. It's official. I'm out of here. Hold man. on. Wait a minute, Lamar. Let's go over here. We can talk about it for a minute. No, thank you. I'm done talking, Deacon. Okay, you don't talk. You just listen, and I'll do all the talking. Yeah, I'm sure you probably can explain all the nuttiness that's going on in this place. <laughs> well, from the looks of it, only Pastor Lynn probably will come up with something like this. You know, only her. You think? Yeah. So you think it's funny, huh? Yes, I do. But Lamar, what in the world ever happened to your sense of humor? You used to laugh a whole lot when you were younger. Yeah, when I was younger, Pastor Nusso wasn't the pastor, and there was some sense of sanity around this place. No, you can't blame that on her because I haven't seen you laugh in years. Well, when I grew older, I realized my father was the head deacon and my mother the mother of the church. So I had to become more serious. No, I don't buy that. And I don't either. Now, I've heard stories about your mama from Mama Scott, and I heard that she was quite the character, a trickster. And so I'm thinking her and Pastor Lynn would have made the perfect pair. Yeah, they would have had this whole entire place laughing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they probably would have. You know, I still miss her. Hey, you remember the story about the goldfish? Yeah. <laughs> and it still makes me laugh to this day. Me too. Oh, man, now you all are making me embarrassed. But I was only 10 years old. Of course I got upset when my goldfish died. <laughs> all right, go on and laugh. But I was really attached to that little fish. And so everything happened the day before Easter? Yeah, it happened on Resurrection Sunday. Mama said that special things happen on Resurrection Sunday. Mm. And so it did. Yeah, so it did. I came home from church, and there was my little fish in its tank. But it wasn't exactly your fish, right? <laughs> so this is, the, this is my question. Where did your mama find a goldfish the night before Easter? Well, <laughs> <laughs> she borrowed it from your cousin Betsy, didn't she? Rumor is, only one problem. Cousin Bessie's fish was twice the size of my fish. <laughs> and it had a black spot on the top of its head. Tell him how, how she explained it. <laughs> Mama said, since he had been in the presence of the Lord since he had died, the Lord's glory had made him swell up. <laughs> <laughs> and the black spot on his head? The black spot was his heavenly crown. Wow. <laughs> and you bought it. I know, hook, line, and sinker, but I was only 10. Wow, you know what? That sounds exactly like something Pastor Lynn would do. <laughs> you know, it's hard taking you seriously when you're in a dressed up in a get up like that. Okay, lady and gentlemen, seriously, I heard your meeting with Pastor Timonson didn't go as well as you planned. And maybe we've caused you to reconsider the way you've been thinking. And maybe you need to consider that your mama prayed for Pastor Lynn to come here to make you laugh again. Her little boy laugh again.
so McKnight in a dress. Please tell me you took pictures. Pictures? Have you lost your ever-loving mind? You know how much effort it took me to wrestle him into that outfit? By the time I was done, girl, I was pooped. I'm talking pooped. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, had I thought about taking a picture, I would have framed that puppy. In fact, I'd have put her right there, Pastor McKnight in a dress. Oh my goodness. Wait, no. <laughs> so did Bert even show up? <laughs> Nope, Bert never showed up. <laughs> like, all this for nothing? Well, now, now, I wouldn't consider it nothing. Because halfway in between, in comes Deacon Hall. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. <laughs> now, I hear tell. He decided that we were really weren't all that bad. So he was officially returning to the church. And the first thing he lays his eyeballs on is the assistant pastor in a wig in a dress, and how does one say, stuffing. Well endowed. Well endowed. Wow. <laughs> if you could have seen his face. Wow. Oh, girl, you and I have too much fun. You got to get out of here. I got to study. <laughs> Bert. <laughs>Yes and no. He's working, making $10 an hour, but he spends it all on himself, like for cell phones and DVDs, CDs, and dates. I mean, he's living a good life. In other words, he has zero motivation when it comes to getting serious about making something out of himself. Zero. And if his parents tried to motivate him by maybe throwing him out of the house, he'd be on the streets. I mean, he hasn't saved any money. Does he have any interest in education? Of course not. Why should he? Well, from my perspective, because he's a child of the king. I mean, I can't even see God Almighty creating him to spend the rest of his life living with he mama or living in an apartment making $10 an hour and spending the rest of his life struggling just to make ends meet. So what should they do? Not the first time I've been asked that question. Here's my suggestion. First thing they have to do is hold a family conference where brand spanking new rules and regulations are gonna be set. Rule number one, you have three months to either get in school or get your own apartment and move out. Rule number two, if you're in school, you have to maintain passing grades and you must hold down a job so that you can help with family expenses. Rule number three, if you have no motivation to make something out of yourself by getting a good education, then you had better save every penny you can get your hands on because in three months, you're on your own. Free room and board, that doesn't exist anymore. Personally, mm -hmm. I think he thinks once he moves out mm -hmm. that it's cheap. It's gonna be cheap to live. So we help him have a paradigm shift in his thinking and get him to make the right decision by having him fill out the form. What form? Glad you asked. Hold on a second. Hard she be. That is most of the expenses that somebody would incur by having their own apartment. Apartment security deposit and monthly rent. Electricity deposit and monthly payments. Phone purchase and monthly fee. Monthly internet fees. Monthly car payment and insurance. Gas, clothes, laundry, medical expenses. Hmm. It's a good list. Now you have make the phone calls, fill in all the blanks. In other words, you give them a reality check on how much it costs to live. I like this. This is great. Gina, parents love their kids, and most parents truly want to have their kids live a relatively stress-free, even responsibility-free life. I mean, you're only a kid once. 
Having said that, there comes a time when kids have to face the realities of life. And one of those realities is it costs money to live. So by filling out that form and they're able to see the numbers for themselves, I'm telling you, there can be a real attitude change. So give them that and see, see if it'll help. And I want to know what happens. <laughs> I will. You know what? As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to give this to my sister right now. Good, good. Thank you. See ya. Alrighty. Hey, good morning. Come on, come on, come on. I already got your tea poured for you. I can't wait to hear about this trip. <sighs> It was one of the most amazing experiences of my life, that's for sure. Wow. <sighs> I think everybody ought to take at least one missions trip in their lifetime. I'm telling you, when you do, you don't look at anything the same ever again, do you? No, you sure don't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> okay, I want to know exactly where you went and how in the world you got there. Oh, well, our team flew to Brazil. Okay. And then we got on a boat that went up and down the Amazon River. The Amazon? <laughs> Was this a canoe or was it a boat boat? Oh no, it was a big, it was a big three-tiered boat. It probably holds 50, 60 people. Oh, you went in style up and down the Amazon. <laughs> wow. Oh. Well, did you stop anywhere along the way? Oh yeah, we stopped at several little villages. Yeah. We went ashore, ministered to women and children. We took much needed clothing and supplies, oh, medicines, wow. eyeglasses. Oh, wow. We even dedicated a new church at one of the places. Wow, wow. So, they, I mean, this wasn't a small city. It was a true village. Little, little tiny village. Yeah, yeah, very oh. poor. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, now that you're home and you're looking back over that experience, what was the takeaway? Well, the Lord did a lot that week, but you know, I was wondering how he was going to use me. Yeah. And I, I wasn't put in charge of anything. I wasn't the main anything. And yet, praise the Lord, I could see him use me in many small, but very real ways, just as I was available to him. Girl, as you just spoke that, I'm telling you, I could feel the pleasure of the Lord. Oh my goodness, I could feel it. Oh yeah, in different times and situations, he used me to love, serve, bless, encourage, support, help, bring joy and laughter, bring openness and acceptance, share my story, I got to sing, teach, promote unity and peace. What an awesome experience. Ooh, and girl, I tell you, I can feel it. I can just, that presence of the Lord, His pleasure just filling the atmosphere. Wow. You know, you're making me think, yes, I've headed a number of things in my years of ministry, but if I'm really honest, the sweetest moments that I've experienced have been when I'm out shopping in a store, maybe in a restaurant, just giving a word of encouragement to somebody, just saying something kind to somebody. I can't count how many times people have said, you know, you don't know what you did for me today. You just, the Lord sent you to me today. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, I, I wasn't a leader of anything. They didn't know me, I didn't know them. Chances were pretty firm that we'd never see each other again. But just ministering to that one person a simple word of kindness. Mm. And I could feel, I could feel the pleasure of God, just like you said. Oh, that's exactly how I felt. Wow. You know, we need a paradigm shift in our thinking, don't we? Oh, yes, we do. We forget that the 99 were left and the one was the one that was sought after, the one. We, we have this mindset of thinking of hundreds where God's heart is always on the individual. Ah, yes, we need a paradigm shift, girl. Mm. Wait a minute. Hello? Mitch, 
Hey, what are you up to? Here in town? What for? Permanently? Permanently what? Listen, that's sweet of you, but honest to Pete, I am booked this week. Yep. Well, that, yeah, that'd be fine. But you're going to have to be patient with me because, you know, I'm pastoring full time now and my calendar just stays a wreck. All right. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right. Good hearing from you. Bye. Permanently what? Mitch is moving back to town. So the Lord's making a way for you two to finally be together. Now, don't start with me. <laughs> I married his brother, and we had a perfectly happy marriage. But you were really in love with Mitch. Well, now, now. He made his decision, and I made mine. And I think we both did all right. Oh, you might have done all right, but from what I hear, he got a divorce. So, why is he moving back here? I didn't ask, and he didn't tell me. Lynn, wouldn't you like to be married again? Wait a minute, give me a minute. How many possible ways are there to say no? And why not? Look, seriously, all I want to do with the rest of my life is just serve the Lord. And Jim was a wonderful husband. But he was never as on fire for the Lord as I was. And that means I was always divided. I'd find out that something exciting was going on in God someplace, and I wanted to head there, but no, I had to head over there because that's where he wanted to go when I was a wife. Again, always divided. I just don't want to put myself in that kind of situation again. She's here, but that doesn't mean she'll be here in five minutes. Who is it? I understand, but don't think for a minute that I can lie to her. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Okay, now who wants you to lie? Who wants you to lie and to whom? Moi? Could only be one person. Bert. And she's on her way. Now, I'm assuming we're all thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Lunch. That was her car. I'm telling you, every man for himself. Hey, stop right there, you sneaky pastor. I see you. How'd she do that? We're sunk. You know it, right? Now, look, look, there's a door back there that got two doors over there. If we well, head out, we can get out of here. Something. It won't take us any time to get out now of she, here. Now, she's worse than Mabel Green. Uh-huh. Is she uh, behind, she us? behind us? You remember me? I'm Carmelita Pavaletti Schwartz, but... You, my friends, may call me Bert. 
Bert. We, we know. know. So, Bert, out of curiosity, why do they call you Bert? Well, I don't know. It makes no sense to me. Something about a big bird, yellow, and a street called Sesame, and a monster cookie. I don't know, but it makes them happy to call me Bert. So I'm happy. So call me Bert. Mm. Okay, Bert. So who you gonna stick us with this week? I have very big surprise for you, a very good deal. He's a good church boy. Mm-hmm. Good church boy from where? Just down the street. Good Catholic church. Down the street? Then why are you bringing him here? It can't be for any good reason. You know what, Pastor? The men's bathroom was right back there. We could have easily slipped in and she never would have found us. Girl, it is old age setting in. I'm just not as quick as I used to be. All right, Bert, fess up. What's wrong with him? There's nothing wrong with him. He's good church boy. Just a misunderstanding. What kind of misunderstanding? I, the man who hired him to collect money from peoples who owe it to him. And so he hunt them down and he collects the monies. Are you talking drug money? No, no, not drug money. His boss is like a bookend and uh, something to do with football. Oh, you mean a bookie? Yes, 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 that's okay. it. He's a good church boy. And when he saw you on television, in jail. Jail? Yes, jail, but you know, he's a good boy. He said he liked you very much. And he would use his talents to help your church. You keep referring to a good deal. Uh -huh. Madam. May I assure you that I doubt I will ever get any warm and fuzzies over anything you consider a good deal. Excuse me, Pastor Lynn. I see you're kind of busy. You think we may be able to talk? Mm, how about 15 minutes in my office? Sounds good. Okay, I'm going to take a pit stop real quick in the men's room. Mm -hmm. He's going to the reading room. <laughs> I hope there's not an Uzi in that thing. No, he's going to show you his special talent for your church. Hmm. Okay. I don't even want to know. Wait a minute. Back up, demon! What she said? No, no. Sneaky pastor, he's a new boss. He collect all prints for you. You'll see. You have to put some monies in there. He will stay until you do. Well, somebody give me some money. Any kind of money. Can't, can't. Uh, How far in those britches you gotta reach? Here. Here, here, there, there. Very nice, but... He likes nobody to cheat God. He, he only takes bills. McKnight, I want a dollar bill or I'm gonna put you on nursery duty for the next month. Here. What in the world? Well, he likes a cheerful giver. And so he only takes $5. Nothing smaller than $5 bill. McKnight, you better give me $5. I'm going to make you holler. Do you know what? Now I'm broke. 
I told you, he made good offerings for you. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> that was Deacon Hall I saw back there, right? Now, Pastor, don't even consider it. it, it but don't do anything crazy. Listen, he may be on his way back. No, but, but you don't understand. I've, I've got a vision here. Now, sir, what did you say your name was? His name is Caesar. Caesar, my man. Now, I hear tell that you don't like anybody that cheats God. And I also hear tell that what you really like is a cheerful giver. Mm. Now, you remember that man you passed back there? He ain't a cheerful giver. He's not a cheerful anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I heard rumors. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I heard rumors that he even cheats God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard it. Now, you know what I think? I think you're such a man of devotion, of commitment, that what I think is you and your basket need to go back to the little boy's room, have a little talk with that deacon hall. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. Go to it. Way to go, Pastor. I think we may have lost him for good See. now. He'll never come back again now. I just I, always doing stuff. <laughs> Pastor Hall is going to be so mad at you. You're shaming me. Uh, yeah. Yes. I'm so embarrassed. No, you're not. I'm embarrassed. No, you ain't. Mm -hmm. Video. Video. <laughs>